Okay, in this video, we're going to look at this device here. Now, this is a web-controlled relay. So inside this box is a relay, and here's your relay output contacts. So we have a common, a normally open, and a normally closed contact. So you pick the contact that fits your application. Now you wire up your device to be controlled to this terminal block, and you just plug it in. Now there's also an input monitor function, and it's labeled input minus and input plus. That will accept the voltage from 3 volts to 12 volts DC, and that will monitor an on-off function or an open-close function. Now inside this box, there's a web server, which is hosting a web page. Now you gain access to the web page through this Ethernet port using your favorite web browser. So it could be e either Internet Explorer or Google Chrome. Now once you gain access to the web page, you could activate and deactivate the relay, and you can monitor the input function. Now when you turn on the relay, this little status LED will come on, and if your input uh, voltage becomes high, this the input status LED will come on. Now each one of these boxes has their own IP address, so you type in the URL, which is the IP address, into your web browser, and you'll gain access to the web page inside the box. Now this box runs on a supply voltage of 9 volts to 28 volts, it's marked VN plus and VN minus, then you have your input pins for your input function, then you have a 5 volt output to control to power up your sensor. Now on the side here you can see a little schematic. You can see the, the really contacts that normally open, normally closed. You can see the input voltage, uh, supply voltage, VN plus and VN minus and ground. And you have your input sensing pins, which is opto isolated, and then you have your 5 volt output which powers your sensor. Now on the back, you could mount this uh, using screws or a DIN rail. So next we'll power this device up and check out its operation. Okay, I have my web controlled relay box powered up by 12 volts. And I have that fed into the VN plus and VN minus on a terminal block. And you can see the power wires here. Now the 5 volt output, I have connected to one side of a toggle switch. Another side of the toggle switch I have fed into the input plus on a terminal block. So now I can simulate an input monitor function. So I can simulate an on-off function or an open-close function with my toggle switch. Now the IP address of this box from the factory is 192.168.1.2 and I have that typed in as a URL into my Google Chrome so I have access to the web page inside the box. Now I have my LAN connection connected to the Ethernet port so I have access to the box and I've gained access into the web page, so now I can control the relay. So you can see I can turn it off and on. You can see the st status light on and off when I activate the relay. And I can simulate an on-off function input with the toggle switch. And you can see the input LED come on, indicating an on-off function or open-close function. And I can actually see that on the web page. So that's the basic wiring of my web-controlled relay box. Okay, I've gained access to the web page of my web controlled relay box. You can see on the right. And I use the IP address 192.168.1.2 to gain access to the web page. And on the left, you can see I have my web camera pointing to the web controlled relay box so we can monitor it in real time. Now I'm simulating a greenhouse controller. So my relay is controlling a sprinkler. And my toggle switch input is monitoring a vent door in my greenhouse. So now I could turn on or off the sprinkler by the on off button. And you can see the, the LED indication light on the web control relay box comes on. And I could turn off the sprinkler. I'm getting the indication on my web relay. Also, I could also pulse the sprinkler with my pulse button. So it'll turn on, then off automatically, and I could control that pulse width to whatever whatever I want. Now I could I can monitor the vent door. Right now it's closed. If I turn on my toggle switch. You can see the vent is open and the LED comes on on the web controlled relay box and I can turn it off. And you can see the vent is closed. So now I have total control over my sprinkler and my vent on my greenhouse. And I can control this from anywhere in the world. Now to do this, you'll need a, a static IP address and that's kind of hard to get from your internet service provider. So I use TeamViewer to get into the computer, and then I can gain access to this page 
and I can control my web controlled relay, which which works out a lot lot better, a lot easier. So that's the basic operation of my web controlled relay box. Okay, I got it to my web control relay box through my smartphone using TeamViewer, so I could be anywhere in the world and I could control my sprinkler. So on my smartphone, I could turn on my sprinkler, you could see it indicated it came on. I could turn it off and I can monitor the vent door. See the vent is open, indication on my on my smartphone. And she'll close, and there it is closed. So now I have total control over my web controlled relay from anywhere in the world using TeamViewer on my smartphone. Okay, this web controlled relay box, which I demonstrated in this video, is the simplest box that this vendor makes. And that's the vendor there. Now they make other boxes. You could get a box that has four relays inside one box, or other boxes that just monitor digital inputs or just monitoring analog inputs or for temperature monitoring. Now these boxes are handy so if you had a greenhouse you could have eight or nine of these in a greenhouse and if your greenhouse is already wired for networking you could just plug these into a common switch and you could gain access to all these boxes. And they're very easy to troubleshoot because you just plug your laptop into the Ethernet port and you could actually troubleshoot each box individually. So they're very handy. So this is just a demo video to show you what kind of hardware is available to build your own web controlled system.